Sammy, you're involved in map collecting. How does map collecting compare to coin and currency collecting? Well, first and foremost, it's a celebration of history. And uh, what we found is that there's been a, de we found a decent amount of crossover between uh, coin and currency collectors and maps. Um, good example is uh, I had a guy who collected South Carolina nationals. And he asked for a couple banks that we didn't have, and I just kind of told him, well, I have a map of South Carolina. He then said, well, I don't collect maps. I told him, might as well take a look, looking's free. And once I showed him, his eyes just lit up because he saw all these place names, all these towns of where he collected. And he came to me uh, the year later at that same show and told me that at his collection, he has all his notes in these uh, shelves. And in the center of his shelving, he has the map of South Carolina. And he uses it to pull his whole collection together and uh, show his friends and family where all his notes are from. And since, since then, I've had a couple people approach me about asking to use maps for uh, exhibits that they've used in coin shows uh, to kind of help tell the story of a lot of these coins and notes and the history behind them. Are there production numbers on maps and what kind of values? Uh, there's average production numbers. Uh, it's very difficult to get any, anywhere near the, uh, the accuracy that we have for, for coins and currency because coins and currency were money, so you have pretty much exact numbers. Um, they didn't keep very good track as far as the production numbers as maps because, I mean, we deal in maps as far back as the late 1400s. So for one, they didn't really keep good records as to how many they made, and after that, how many have survived since then. Um, a good example is there's a map maker by the name of John Speed who published a lot in the early 1600s. He was based in London, and in London they had a massive fire in the 1600s and a lot of his atlases, a lot of his materials burned. Um, so, you know, that, that there's simple events like that that kind of make it difficult to track the, the numbers. Basically what we go on is what's currently out there on the market and recent auction results. What kind of value for maps? Uh, a lot less than what people would think. Um, you can get maps from the 1500s, the 1600s, 1700s for a couple hundred dollars, uh, $200, $300. Uh, you can get maps from the 1800s, mid-1800s of individual states around the U.S. for $65, $75, $80, $100. A lot of the value is based on, well, of course, there's rarity and condition, but also the importance of the map or what does it show. Is the map the first to depict something, say a world map, is it the first to show California as an island, which is a popular area of collecting? Uh, after that, how many other maps began to show California as an island, or how many other maps based their geography on that initial, on, on that initial map? So was it a landmark for something? So that, that adjusts the value, but for the most part, people can get beautiful maps that they love to hang in their homes, uh, they use it to kind of, uh, you know, honor their ancestry or, you know, celebrate places where they've been. And you can get basic maps of just about anywhere in the world for very reasonable prices, especially compared to uh, coins and currency. And that's just because the market is so much smaller because most people don't know that you can collect this stuff.